look, the note just said, don't try and find me. Oh, no. You didn't see it? Well, not since she came in earlier. I mean, she was in a funny mood. What kind of funny mood? Oh, not like she was going to run away. In fact, she said she was going to work her way through Roy's menu before the trial. She's not got much past all day breakfast. If she contacts you? I'll let you know straight away. And tell Eileen if she wants to get me, I'll be on the radio. Oh, dear. You know, uh, this isn't a word I use very often, but I hate that ooch fella. He's a disgrace. I'd happily do unspeakable things. See you later. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, Kevin's hopeless. He'd rather be in the old house, but I say to him, Kevin, the space. I mean, I bet you've not sat six people down since you moved in, have you? I don't know, we show our faces. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean. We might have to sit six down, mind, if we have any more kids. You want more kids? No, but accidents happen. Like the one that nearly killed me a few weeks back. We're not going to have any more. Do you get broody sound now the girls are big than that? Ty? What? It's none of our business, is it? <sighs> Couldn't go through all that again, running around day and night. And he'd be less than useless at that. I'll pull me weight with the girls. <sighs> Got a lot more weight to pull now. You won't want any more kids anyway, Kevin. It'll cut into your precious pub time. Oh, he's getting more caveman every day. Hey, it is his birthday. Yeah, give me a break. Two cavemen together then. Is Tyrone one and all? Um, I don't think any of them are. Oh, traitor. Ah, did anyone like Christini? Fresh goes favourites. I'll have uh, an orange juice, please, Liz, and white blanket still. Gene tea, lad? I suppose. Been stood up by Deirdre. Sooner stop in with Ken and do her packing than play bridge with me at the one o'clock club. She's no sense of adventure, hasn't Deirdre? We've time to get there, if you want to partner me. But just watch that Anna Ashby. She's a taste for young flesh. Well, thanks, Blanche, but I think I'm going to give that one a miss. I've got a date. With who? There's no idea yet. Hiya. Uh, can I buy you ladies a drink? Becky, it, it's Hayley and, and Roy. Listen, if you get this, um, Steve's looking all over and we're worried about you. I said to Roy, you'd, you'd not go without a word to us, not, not even goodbye, you, you wouldn't. Roy's been out to shop for one of them dishes from that recipe book you bought me from Maldives. You were going to cook it for you in his chef's hat, weren't you? Roy. I... We... You are very important to us, Becky. Very. We love you very much. Keep safe. Mm, that pavlova was gorgeous. Molly made it. No, nope, Molly assembled it. I made it. Well, she whipped the cream in that. Mm. I would have put more raspberries on. Well, whoever made it, it was gorgeous. Well, shall we retire? Due to the conservatory, because I thought we could have a game or something. Charades? No, I've got scruples. Shall I open uh, another bottle of wine? Mm. Oh, I could squeeze down another glass. <sighs> Don't open one specially. Okay. Am I not allowed to drink on a Friday night? Yeah, of course you are. Thank you, Kevin. You are much nicer than Ashley. You've had plenty. Mm. Don't worry, I'm not going to make a pass at him. <laughs> I've been there, done that. <laughs> Do you remember <laughs> when I made a pass at you? <laughs> I was mortified. <laughs> but in my defence, I had been clinically mad and Ashley was cheating. Are you saying that's what it takes to fancy my husband? Because I usually find a pair of wine goggles to the chick. <laughs> <laughs> that's so nasty. <laughs> You've done an but snipe at him all night. Well, excuse me for making a joke. Yeah, but it wasn't a joke, though, was it? Wasn't it? No. Have 
you got X-ray vision into other people's relationships, then, have you? I thought we were going through to the conservatory. Yeah, we should go and check on Jack. I don't like leaving him yeah. alone. Right. When he's thinking of moving on. I'll take these through. No, leave it. Kevin will help me. If that's not some sort of abuse. So, come on, Mom. <laughs> what about that wine? <laughs> so you read minds. Yeah, Weatherfield's answer to Darren Brown, mate. Go on then. What am I thinking? Okay. You have to give me a hand. No, oh, I. Shh. I'm concentrating. Right. Is he single? Has he got a car with him, or is he an alcoholic? And if he asks for my phone number, shall I give it? You're such a blagger. And the answers are yes, single, recovering alcoholic, and yes, he should give me a phone number. Okay. Your turn. What am I thinking? Okay. Liam! Are you? <laughs> You're thinking, is she impressed with my chat up line? The answer being no. You're also thinking, I'm only interested when I'm speaking. As soon as she opens her mouth, I switch off. No, sorry, no, I'm not at all. I just noticed your glass was empty, worried that you think I'd spoil things by not drinking. Well, it's good to hear you sounded so bright, love. Yeah. Same old, same old. Nothing changes round here, love. <laughs> you all right, Jack? Hi, son. Hi. Can I get you another one? No, I think I'll be getting home. Who says? True. I don't think I'll be getting the rolling pin if I stagger in at 9 o'clock in the morning, will I? <laughs> hey, I'm sure she'll be swinging it at you from somewhere. <laughs> hey, stick him another one in there. She's a stupid copy cow, that's all. Well, I think you should apologise. Well, I said not worse than Claire. Well, I think she should apologise and all. She's rude! Molly, what is up with you? Because if you're not going to explain why you're being like this, at least don't drag me into it. I've got to work with Kev and I've got to speak to Sally and all. Right. Well, I'll go and apologise. Oh, let's go for a drink first. Give Claire and Ashley a chance to go. Roy's Rolls, hello. Becky, is, is that...? I'm sorry, Roy, I should have said goodbye, but... Where, where, where are you? You make sure you still cook that special, yeah? Call it Beck's Fave or something. You two, you're the, you're the best in the world. Don't, don't hang up. I'm being in this phone now. So I tell Steve there's no point ringing it no more. It's right, right. It's the right thing. Look after each other, yeah? Becky! Where is she? She didn't say. What? Fall it back! She said she's binning the phone. Oh! There was a tannoy in the background, a, a, a announcement. Train station? Airport? I don't think so, because, I mean, I'm fairly sure, but of course, it could be a lorry of... Roy, what did you hear? Air brakes. Air brakes. Which would suggest a coach. Right, let's tell Steve. to me. Please. Spent half 
about my life in these places. Travelling. Sleeping rough. Well, you can't want to go back to that. You think I'm running because of me? I'm going for you and Ames. Well, then don't, because we don't want you to. Remember Maldives? One night, I crept out onto the balcony. And there were all these boats just... Just... What's it in? Up and down on the water. I wanted to squeal. Should have woke me up. Nah. No, cos that were it, you see. You lying there in that big posh bed all asleep and that. Me stood on a balcony in the dark. And then boats. With all the whole seat of sail on, but happy just... What's it in? Up and down and up and down. Felt like a dream. Or a dream, really. Come on. I can't, Steve. I honestly can't. Thanks. See you again. Emily said Josh was unsettled. Claire. Go and read him a story. Well, at least tell me where you were going. Don't know. You know what? I've had enough of this. You might not care about you, Becky, but I flaming do. Well, that's not my fault. You know, you go on about the Maldives. It wasn't a dream. I was there. It was real life. Our real life. Yeah. You give me all that and what do you get You! Back? I get you! You, you moony cow. A beautiful, loyal, passionate, crazy. Half the time you seem that breakable I don't even let you step foot out the front door. The other half you're like a shook-up can of lager that no-one's safe from. I've seen you nearly take down a wall because you couldn't do the zip up on your top. And then the next minute, you're reading a bedtime story to Amy, just twiddling with her hair. You make me sound like a pet monkey. <laughs> pet monkeys don't decide they're not worthy and get on flaming buses. Pet monkeys, I bet, work out where they're loved and Part the lady backsides down right there and stay put. You say my backsides there? No. I'm saying. Do what you like. But don't dare kid yourself this is for me. Don't you flaming dare. Because you'll break my flipping heart. Don't look at me like that. I've only had the one. <laughs> so what do you reckon, my little swamp duck? You're in the walls here. In the bricks and mortar. Ah, oh, yeah, it's like... In my head, that's where you are. In my own. Happy birthday.
You know that bush you made me get off? My bag's still on it. People bring one bottle and then drink two. I'm not drunk. I meant Ashley and Claire. I came to say sorry. <sighs> right, well, uh, I was... I was rude. So that it's OK, Sal. We'd all had a drink. She was telling me she was sober. Well, I'm not sober, just not drunk. I wasn't the only one making comments. Claire was horrible about Ashley, but you didn't go knotting your knickers over that, did you? No, I know. It was just the last straw. Look, um, I've brought this to say sorry. Staff discount. Well, it is from the Rovers. Pay double there. Sally, I'm double sorry. All right. I, look, I was just worried about Kevin. I, I didn't want his evening to go all pear-shaped. Hey! I had a great time, me. Mm. Thanks for organising it, you know, the food and everything. And the pavlova was all Sally. I only assembled it. Do you want to take a piece home with you? No, no, I'm fine. For Jack? Um, yeah, all right, go on then. Cos Kevin was about to scoff the last bit, weren't you? <laughs> If I'm allowed to say that. Well, of course, look, um, if Kevin wants it, it's fine. No, yeah, take it for Jack. The conservatory. I'll go and wrap it. Don't look at me like that. I can't help it. Don't make a for sales. I feel enough of a fool as it is. Don't be so daft. Oh, come here. Oh. You didn't think you'd found her? Oh, thanks to Roy's air brakes. Uh, very distinctive. Uh, a remarkable invention, safety-wise, uh, compared to the hydraulic system, which suits the smaller vehicle. <laughs> such a... Roy. <sighs> Come here, sit yourself down. I've made something for you. I thought I was going to have to eat it myself. Oh, no, Ailes, thanks. I couldn't, though. I've not felt right since some tin tomatoes this morning, you know. Uh, but perhaps the anxiety of the day has more to do with your loss of appetite. I wasn't slagging your tomatoes, Roy, honest. <laughs> Is that...? It's vodka jelly. Yeah, made by my own fair inner party animal. <laughs> I brought the wrong one home from the bus station. This can't be my Becky's. This one's too soft. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Asleep. If you want a row, let's do it quietly, eh? I don't want to be like her. I won't be like her. Like Sally Webster. No! Her, me, the me that I was tonight. Then don't be. You made me feel like this. You did. You made me look like the cow, and I'm not a cow. Just that. Lied to. The not listened to, the not cared about. Of course, I cared about you. Yeah. I knew why I felt like I did not make them at sex to me. I love it, Claire, because I love you. I trusted you. I said I am sorry. And that makes me the cow. Let's just talk about this tomorrow, eh? No. We'll not talk about it anymore. Not another word. You'll hear nothing from me. 
No vasectomy, no hospitals, no arguments, and no sex. You know why I was so scared of getting pregnant again? I never forced you to agree to the op. I never said you did. I'll not let you make me hate myself for not wanting to take the risk. Well, don't just walk off. The subject's closed. But don't you dare lay one finger on me. Not one. Night, night. Right, let's get you home. I wonder if you can smuggle vodka jelly into Nick for me. I don't know. I use your imagination. Right? You could fill two rubber gloves with the stuff and then you could put your own hands up your sleeve and then have the rubber gloves <laughs> Never show Never mind hands. smuggling. I'll get arrested for looking like a mutant Teletubby. Mm. Anyway, we're not talking about prison time. No. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm going to have cocktails this evening with my new wife, Becky McDonald. No prison, no ooch, and no last few nights of freedom. Exactly. Oh, Steve, how are we going to get through this? We will. Parallels with an unsolved case which gradually takes the investigation closer to a very wealthy family. Rebus is next tonight.